A famine is a widespread scarcity of food, caused by several factors including crop failure, population imbalance, or government policies. This phenomenon is usually accompanied or followed by regional malnutrition, starvation, epidemic, and increased mortality. Nearly every continent in the world has experienced a period of famine throughout history. Some countries, particularly in sub-Sahara Africa, continue to have extreme cases of famine. History The cyclical occurrence of famine has been a mainstay of societies engaged in subsistence agriculture since the dawn of agriculture itself. The frequency and intensity of famine has fluctuated throughout history, depending on changes in food demand, such as population growth, and supply-side shifts caused by changing climatic conditions. Famine was first eliminated in Holland and England during the 17th century. Due to the commercialization of agriculture and the implementation of improved techniques to increase crop yields, Decline of famine The feudal system of the Middle Ages, in which subsistence peasants worked on the land of a lord in return for protection. In the 16th and 17th century, the feudal system began to break down, and more prosperous farmers began to enclose their own land and improve their yields to sell the surplus crops for a profit. These capitalist landowners paid their laborers with money, thereby increasing the commercialization of rural society. In the emerging competitive labor market, better techniques for the improvement of labor productivity were increasingly valued and rewarded. It was in the farmer's interest to produce as much as possible on their land in order to sell it to areas that demanded that product. They produced guaranteed surpluses of their crop every year if they could. Subsistence peasants were also increasingly forced to commercialize their activities because of increasing taxes. Taxes that had to be paid to central governments in money forced the peasants to produce crops to sell. Sometimes they produced industrial crops, but they would find ways to increase their production in order to meet both their subsistence requirements as well as their tax obligations. Peasants also used the new money to purchase manufactured goods. The agricultural and social developments encouraging increased food production were gradually taking place throughout the 16th century, but took off in the early 17th century, by the 1590s. These trends were sufficiently developed in the rich and commercialized province of Holland to allow its population to withstand a general outbreak of famine in Western Europe at that time. By that time, the Netherlands had one of the most commercialized agricultural systems in Europe. They grew many industrial crops such as flax, hemp and hops. Agriculture became increasingly specialized and efficient. The efficiency of Dutch agriculture allowed for much more rapid urbanization in the late 16th and early 17th centuries than anywhere else in Europe. As a result, productivity and wealth increased, allowing the Netherlands to maintain a steady food supply. By 1650, English agriculture had also become commercialized on a much wider scale. The last peacetime famine in England was in 1623-24. There were still periods of hunger, as in the Netherlands, but no more famines ever occurred. Common areas for pasture were enclosed for private use and large-scale, efficient farms were consolidated. Other technical developments included the draining of marshes, more efficient field use patterns, and the wider introduction of industrial crops. These agricultural developments led to wider prosperity in England and increasing urbanization. By the end of the 17th century, English agriculture was the most productive in Europe. In both England and the Netherlands, the population stabilized between 1650 and 1750, the same time period in which the sweeping changes to agriculture occurred. Famines still occurred in other parts of Europe, however, in East Europe, famines occurred as late as the 20th century. Attempts at famine alleviation because of the severity of famine, it was a chief concern for governments and other authorities. In pre-industrial Europe, preventing famine and ensuring timely food supplies was one of the chief concerns of many governments. 
Although they were severely limited in their options due to limited levels of external trade and in infrastructure and bureaucracy generally too rudimentary to effect real relief, most governments were concerned by famine because it could lead to revolt and other forms of social disruption. By the mid-19th century and the onset of the Industrial Revolution, it became possible for governments to alleviate the effects of famine through price controls, large-scale importation of food products from foreign markets, stockpiling, rationing, regulation of production and charity. The initial response of the British government to the early phase of the famine was prompt and relatively successful, according to F. S. L. Lyons. Confronted by widespread crop failure in the autumn of 1845, Prime Minister Sir Robert Peel purchased £100,000 worth of maize and cornmeal secretly from America. Bering Brothers and Co. initially acted as purchasing agents for the Prime Minister. The government hoped that they would not stifle private enterprise, and that their actions would not act as a disincentive to local relief efforts. Due to weather conditions, the first shipment did not arrive in Ireland until the beginning of February 1846. The maize corn was then resold for a penny a pound. In 1846, Peel moved to repeal the Corn Laws, tariffs on grain which kept the price of bread artificially high. The famine situation worsened during 1846 and the repeal of the Corn Laws in that year did little to help the starving Irish. The measure split the Conservative Party, leading to the fall of Peel's ministry. In March, Peel set up a program of public works in Ireland. Despite this promising start, the measures undertaken by Peel's successor, Lord John Russell, proved comparatively inadequate as the crisis deepened. Russell's ministry introduced public works projects, which by December 1846 employed some half million Irish and proved impossible to administer. The government was influenced by a laissez-faire belief that the market would provide the food needed. It halted government food and relief works, and turned to a mixture of indoor and outdoor direct relief, the former administered in workhouses through the poor law, the latter through soup kitchens. A systematic attempt at creating the necessary regulatory framework for dealing with famine was developed by the British Raj in the 1880s. In order to comprehensively address the issue of famine, the British created an Indian Famine Commission to recommend steps that the government would be required to take in the event of a famine. The Famine Commission issued a series of government guidelines and regulations on how to respond to famines and food shortages called the Famine Code. The Famine Code was also one of the first attempts to scientifically predict famine in order to mitigate its effects. These were finally passed into law in 1883 under Lord Ripon. The code introduced the first famine scale. Three levels of food insecurity were defined, near scarcity, scarcity, and famine. Scarcity was defined as three successive years of crop failure, crop yields of one-third or one-half normal, and large populations in distress. Famine further included a rise in food prices above 140% of normal, the movement of people in search of food, and widespread mortality. The Commission identified that the loss of wages from lack of employment of agricultural laborers and artisans were the cause of famines. The Famine Code applied a strategy of generating employment for these sections of the population and relied on open-ended public works to do so. 20th century During the 20th century, an estimated 70 million people died from famines across the world, of whom an estimated 30 million died during the famine of 1958-61 to in China. The other most notable famines of the century included the 1942-1945 disaster in Bengal, famines in China in 1928 and 1942, and a sequence of famines in the Soviet Union, including the Soviet famine of 1932-1933. Caused by the policies of Stalin. A few of the great famines of the late 20th century were the Biafran famine in the 1960s, the Khmer Rouge caused famine in Cambodia in the 1970s, 
The North Korean famine of the 1990s and the Ethiopian famine of 1984-85. The latter event was reported on television reports around the world carrying footage of starving Ethiopians whose plight was centered around a feeding station near the town of Kalm. This stimulated the first mass movements to end famine across the world. BBC newsreader Michael Burke gave moving commentary of the tragedy on 23 October 1984, which he described as a biblical famine. This prompted the Band Aid single, which was organized by Bob Geldof and featured more than 20 pop stars. The Live Aid concerts in London and Philadelphia raised even more funds for the cause. An estimated 900,000 people died within one year as a result of the famine. But the tens of millions of pounds raised by Band Aid and Live Aid are widely believed to have saved the lives of Ethiopians who were in danger of dying.